So here we are at the end of day five. I got 90 kilos on the board, and this was a back and forth battle between so many different talented players. Um, I don't think anybody could have predicted the final. You might have been able to predict the winner. Um, he was definitely in my final, but on the bottom half of the draw, it was just all over the place. So let's take a look at this draw and see what happened and talk about some key moments. So let's bring this up right here. We're gonna kind of go through this side by side. So right off the rip, our semifinal was Spain coming through and that's where we ended up going awry. But we ended up putting the Georgian here all the way through into the final. Um, the one that threw me for a little bit of a loop was the Russian boy um, right here coming through. And he actually ends up getting into the semi. It didn't affect my overall pick for the final, um, but he actually came to score. When you watch him fight through the Olympics, he was like, I'm making commitments to score and throw people. So he was kind of an exciting player to watch just throughout the day. A lot of these other ones were fairly easy to pick. Um, Nyman, former European champ, comes through. That's easy. We have Bozbaev winning from Kazakhstan. We have the Azerbaijani coming through. He was a player I used to uh, play when he was 81 kilos when I was still competing. Uh, both of them actually were. So we come down here. Um, the next one we have is the Israeli coming through easy enough. Um, talented player, he's just, I think that Georgian's just, his aggressiveness and his, I'm just gonna grab the gi and throw you with whatever I can, I think it just outdoes the Israeli player who's a little bit more tactical, a little bit slower. And in this rule set today of judo, it just benefits the Georgian. Um, and we'll take a look at that later on as to why that is. Have the Uzbekistan player fight in the Georgian, so we're right there. Um, Ukrainian guy coming through, easy to pick. Um, the Dominican player is actually fairly talented. You don't think of him as a typical South American judoka. He actually gave the guy a run for his money and you know he almost threw him quite a few times. Um, I had Ventian winning the entire thing. I just, I thought his judo under these rule sets were gonna be beneficial to him with the Sodes. But man, he got into some massive, massive gripping battles early on. Um, his match, here specifically, where we have Clarget coming through. The taxingness when you're gripping with Clarget, he used to be 81s and somebody I trained with all the time, like the way he grips and how he grips is like 80% of his judo. Then he has about another 15% in Newaza where basically when he gets guys to take a knee because they're so exhausted from gripping, he sits into the Sankakus really well and he finishes a lot of guys with it. So Van Tien had an all-out battle um, over gripping with Clarget. He ends up pulling it out, so we do get to see him come through. He just didn't make it as far because when the upset of the day for me was the Turkish boy right here because as he's coming through the bracket, right, look at this. He comes all the way through. But when you look at my sheet, right, I actually have the Cuban coming through that portion of the bracket. Again, just thinking of the mindset of, of the rules of judo, the Cuban has a gas tank, like doesn't get tired. He's always on you, always on you, and eventually causes a mistake. And this actually goes a minute and 20 seconds into golden score, and then the Turkish guy just catches him. Ends the match, it is what it is, and he works his way through. And what happens is that actually changes the whole outcome of everything that happens here. Um, and before we continue on through this, let's take a look down here because here's the other huge upset in the bracket, okay? I actually have Mukai coming all the way through, but right here, Toth from Hungary, man, he, he stepped up. I just, I felt like he was on his downslide from when he meddled at the Worlds years ago. You know, he's always been consistent. He just, I felt like he struggled to get into the later rounds. And when he was going with the Japanese guy who's trained and fighting in Japan, I just gave the Japanese guy that edge going through, but Toth battled it out. I mean, they were, what is that? Two minutes and 55 seconds into golden score before Toth threw him. And when you look at the throw, if you go back and watch this, it is a questionable score. 
it looked like to me the Japanese guy was getting ready to do a sumi, like just to try to get an attack off. And at the same time, Toth kind of steps, and I think he goes to like push the Japanese player out of bounds to get the other Shido. And at that same time, when Toth steps in, it actually splits the Japanese player's leg. Japanese player kind of trips, I put that in air quote, trips over Toth's leg, and Toth lands on top. The referees award it Ippon, and it ends the Japanese day because, guess what? It's before the quarter, so the Japanese player is out of the whole tournament. Um, crazy, crazy to think about. I mean, I had him losing and finishing fifth anyway, so I didn't think he was going to medal. <clears throat> Just shocked to see him lose in that fashion because the grip that he had is, and the situation he was in is not somewhere you would typically see a Japanese player. The other huge, huge, and I'm going to highlight this guy in a different color because we have to talk about this, is the German player. I don't think there was a person on the planet except for this German and his coach that anticipated this coming all the way through. Um, and we're going to take a look at him after we finish the bracket because when we look at what he went through to get to where he got and where he came from, it's astounding. It just goes to show you that you know, if you have the talent, you have the belief in yourself, you'll be able to pull it out at this level. Um, you still have to have the skill to be able to do it and you have to be willing to take the opportunity at this time to do that. And he does just that. Japanese player loses. Um, the other big upset here is he throws the Korean player first gripping exchange right off the rip. It's just a swinging left makikomi out of nowhere and the Korean guy gets thrown dead center in the middle of the mat. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. It, sho it shocked me to no end. I mean, I had, I had, eat right off the rip, I had the Serbian player win it, and then the Korean beating the Serbian, and then a Japanese-Korean uh, quarterfinal. And then that just went awry on me, just right off the rip. So the only other part that we did well in down here was right here. So we had a really good upper half where we kind of saw the draw playing out a certain way. Um, you know, we only missed a couple of matches up there, but down here, right, this is where it went, all went awry. Um, and bef before we continue, um, shout out to the Georgian for actually winning. Um, he was kind of like a dark horse for me in this. Um, I've had a few conversations with people a few months ago as he was somebody that could potentially win the Olympics just given his mentality, the rule set, um, some of the bigger wins he's had. But let's take a look at the German here because he actually upset everybody. And I really wanna just kinda take a look at his stats as a whole while we're going through here. So he is, he's, is currently 15 in the world as of right now. And here's his stats on judo base, right? The Olympic Games happened right now. His World Championship bronze is a junior medal, right? Um, actually, I believe both of these are junior medals. Um, his World Masters, this World Masters is actually in 2021. So that's right after a COVID year, he's able to medal. His Grand Slams, these are actually, the silver I believe is 2021. And these ones are 2018 and 2019. His Continental Championship silver is a junior medal as well. So looking at this, he had a lot of results as a junior. His senior results are kind of lackluster, right? He's, he's over here a lot. Um, you know, probably finishing ninth, losing just before the quarters, that type of stuff, because he does win matches. It's not like he's showing up to tournaments and going like 0-1 oh or 1-1. One one. Like he's, he's beating solid players and he's taking the fight to them. But at the end of the day, it's about getting on the podium and showing that consistency. And over here, when we actually take a look at what he goes through to get there, match one, he is a former world champion who is currently ranked sixth in the world, beats him. Match two, he has a Korean who is former world champion, ranked 16 in the world currently, beats him, no problem. Match three, 
He fights the Hungary, the Hungarian, former world champion, currently ranked three in the world, takes him into Golden Score, wins no problem. He goes into match four in the semifinal. He fights the Turkish boy, European Games champion in 2019, beats him, right? Just look at these stats of the people he's beating, and then you look at his stats over here and you're like, they're nowhere to be found. He's never, he's never been able to accomplish any of these things throughout his career. So one of the things I wanna point out um, when we're looking at this, and I'm starting to see this trend through here is um, as we do this, right? These particular results um, as a whole are probably the most important. These ones that happen in 2021. And the reason why I say that is because if we remove the, the events from 2021, these are blanks, okay? And I think what's happening, and I've seen it a few times where people who have exceeded expectations throughout the Olympic Games, um, they have big results that are above anything they've done previously. They're winning Grand Slams in 2021. They're taking silvers at Grand Slams. They've medaled at World Masters. And I think what's happening and what I'm seeing as a trend at this Olympic Games is when they start 2021 after COVID, they haven't competed, they've done a lot of training, they've done a lot of prep work. When 2021 hits, they start getting results. There's a belief in them that they're finally at this level. The question becomes, once the circuit kicks back on and a lot of those former top players, if they stick around through this Olympics going into the next one in Paris, if they start getting back on a competition and a training circuit internationally, do these players that have Olympic medals actually fall off because those other players happen? So what I'm thinking happening is some of these players that are sitting around like the 15, 18s, 12s, they're going up in 2021 because they're hungry. The players that were a little bit higher, they require better training partners, which is why we have the international camps. They require competition. So through 2020 and COVID, their judo went down a little bit. When they competed, a lot of the other players, those higher level players, they waited because they were training for the games. Well, these people gained a belief. So there's this path here where these players are rising. These players have fallen a little bit, but I think the other players on the circuit, these guys down here, right, that he's beaten, when the competition circuit starts kicking back on, I think we're gonna see them come back up the question is, is because he's medaled at the Olympics, can he keep that momentum going and continue to prove that we start seeing gold medals here, silvers here, golds here, silvers here. Like hopefully we see a four here, a three here. You know, we start to see world championships. Like we see like a couple fifths, maybe a silver throughout like his career to show that this isn't just a fluke because of COVID. And he is a talented player, it's just, I'm seeing a trend throughout the Olympics when I talk about these people that have standed out. We're seeing a lot of results that are just above what they normally would have done only in 2021. And I think there's a momentum shift mentally in their heads that they're feeling a belief they can do it. But let's take a look here at some of the other kind of key numbers. There were 36 total matches um, in the bracket. 39% of those went to golden score, so 14. You know, 42% of these matches, one of the players had two Shitos. Again, not to say that they lost, but this was an interesting one right here. Nobody in the entire bracket at the Olympic Games, no players both scored on each other. So essentially, <clears throat> when we look at this draw right here, right? Um, it's essentially one giant golden score match. And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if we look at this in this light, if we change the mentality of judo to, you know what, the clock starts at zero and it only counts up. That's the only point of a clock. We're just measuring how long matches are. Because what's happening is a lot of these players, judo's four minutes. 
So when we set the clock at the clubs, we're going for four minutes. Sometimes you set it for five, sometimes you do four minutes with a one minute golden score, but your training is built, your strength and conditioning is built around that four minutes. But what we're seeing here, like let's take a look at the Spanish player, seven minutes, seven and a half minutes, right? Like, like he's, his body is over taxing, right? It's like I'm training to run the 100 meters and waking up one day going, you know what? Today you're gonna run the mile and you're gonna do it a few times. It's like the system isn't ready for it. So I think if, if we change this to where the players train for the Olympics under the idea of it just being golden score, I bet you, you see a lot of these top players come through because they'll set the clock at their clubs for six and a half, seven minute rounds, just knowing that it's gonna take that long to actually get a score on the board, right? And if it ends early, great. But there's a happy medium here where I think if we looked at the average duration of the fight time, um, we would see it somewhere around, you know, I would say five, five to six minutes. Um, Cause some of these matches are into the tens. I mean, some of them are shorter. Like we have a 117 here, but there's a six minute here, 515 here, 442, seven, 902, right? Four, four. So I think just wondering like 655, like the, a lot of the top players, I don't think they anticipated going into those deep waters so many times in such a physical setting. Um, and we're seeing a lot of the players that were just like, hey man, I know I'm not as good as you. So they plan on going that distance and trying to win in golden score. And the mentality just going into the tournament is I think what's affecting a lot of the results that we're seeing at the games.